All right, in this politics video, we're going to look at President Trump's recent interview on Axios on HBO. And the first clip we're going to see is about communication on COVID-19. The criticism of you that, that is most prominent is about the communication. It's the public health experts saying that it needs to be based in reality. And they're saying that the wishful thinking and the salesmanship is just not suitable in a time when a pandemic has killed 145,000 Americans. And it's, it's that I understand what you're saying, that people need to hear positive thinking. But, you know, for the past five months, it's been the virus is totally under control and the cases have been going up and the deaths but have been going look, up. Look, look. But you've been saying it's Nobody under control. Nobody knew what this thing was all about. This had so the question is about communication concerning the pandemic. Frequently, it's been repeated that things are going well, very well. It will disappear. It's perfect. And that's why the president's receiving this criticism. So let's take a look at his response. It's never happened before. 1917, but it was a totally yeah. different. It was a flu in that yeah. case. OK, but other than 1917, there's never been anything like this. And by the way, if you watch. The so he's saying it's brand new for us other than the Spanish flu, for example, which actually originated in the United States, but that's another story. And because we don't know about it, he's saying that we can't be expected, essentially, or it's like really hard to do well. Now, there were a lot of signs about, warning signs about things getting worse and worse, which arguably were in a sense, ignored in some cases, or just assumed that they were too hard to deal with. So he decided to do nothing instead. The fake news on television, they don't even talk about it. But you know, there are 188 other countries right now that are suffering some proportionately far greater than we are, okay? As bad as we Very are. Very few. Well, some proportionately greater than we are. Right now, right now, Spain is having a big spike. There are tremendous problems in the world. As far as among the most developed countries, the top countries, there are very few which have out, uh, outlooks which are worse than ours. Now, you could call the data into question, but in general, it's hard to believe that everywhere else in the world is faking their data. When our numbers look bad, if everyone else is faking the data, then maybe it's like a trick, but for that to happen, it would have to be some extreme conspiracy going on. So let's look at another clip starting about when they're talking about how they knew it was bad by June. June, we knew things were bad. And you know, the last time I was with you was the, the day before your Tulsa rally in the Oval. And you know, you were saying, big huge crowd it was indoors by the way these people they listen to you big, excuse me Jeff. yeah we had a 19,000 seats so this is a little strange about when we're talking about how bad the pandemic is we are diverging into bragging about rally size data first of all we had 12,000 people not 6,000 which you reported and other people report but you couldn't even get in. It was like an armed camp. Why would you have wanted that? 120 Black Lives Matter people. I understand, but why would you have wanted a huge Tulsa, crowd? Excuse me, wait. And Tulsa, well, because that area was a very good area at the time. It was a, an area that was Cases pretty much stopped. over. After, after, a month later, it started before. going up. That's a month later. That but Tulsa was a very good, Oklahoma was doing very well as a state. It was almost free. It spiked a month later, a month and a half, two months later. So he's saying how there, he believes it was more under control, and that's why a rally would be appropriate now. Okay, fair enough, makes sense. But the, the idea behind the question is still, why focus on this when there's a pandemic to be solved? But it was a good area. We had a tremendous crowd. We had tremendous response. You and again, back to the bragging about size and how great or big it was, or purportedly. You couldn't even, it was like an armed camp. 
You couldn't even get through. You couldn't get anybody in. But I'm, I'm we had 12,000 people. It was incorrectly reported. The other thing we had that nobody wants to talk about, so Fox broadcast it. It was the highest rating in the history of Fox television, Saturday night. It was the highest rating. Mr. President. My speech. And again, about the ratings of the rally as well. Well, wait a minute. You're, you're saying something. Yes. That speech was the highest rated speech in the history of Fox, te Fox television on Saturday night. And nobody says I think, that. I think you misunderstand me. I'm criticizing your ability to draw a crowd. Are well, you kidding me? I've covered you for five years. You draw massive I'm crowds, you get this. huge ratings. I'm asking about that. The interviewer does a decent job of drawing it back. In case he's being too hard, he will pull it back with a compliment so they can keep going and figure out more of what is going on in the background and the back and the continue with the interview. Public time, health. And I canceled another one. I had to cancel it. Right. We're going to have a great crowd in New Hampshire, and I canceled it for the same reason. But here's the question. It, you know, I've covered you for a long time. I've, I've gone to your rallies. I've talked to your people. They love you. They listen to you. They listen to every word you say. They hang on your every word. They don't listen to me or the media or Fauci. They think we're fake news. They want to get their advice from you. And so when they hear you say everything's under control, don't worry about wearing masks, I mean, these are people, many of them are older people, well, Mr. President. So he's suggesting, obviously, the official message should be distance, social distance, wear a mask, be safe, avoid public gatherings when possible. You don't even necessarily have to mandate it. You can just tell people, please, this is serious. Please do these things. Definition of control. Yeah. Under it's the giving them a false sense right of security. Now, I think it's under control. I'll tell you what. How? A thousand Americans are dying a day. They are dying. That's true. And you ha it is what it is. But that doesn't. So this was the highly criticized statement where it is what it is, kind of brushing off the impact of, of, of what's happening here with so many deaths. More widely reported on specifically, it is what it is. It doesn't mean we aren't doing everything we can. It's under control as much as you can control it. This is a horrible plague that beset us. You really think this is as much as we can control? Uh, well, a thousand I'll deaths you, a day? I'd like to know. So. Let's move on to the next clip and get into a little bit specifically about the statistics about how it's going. I, the, the figure I look at is death, and death is going up now. Okay, no, it's no. a thousand a day. If you look at death, yeah, it's going up look, again. Let's look. Daily death. Take a look at some of these charts. I'd okay? love to. We're going to look. Let's look. And if you look at death, yeah, uh, started to go up again. One. Well, right here. The United States is lowest in numerous categories. Uh, we're lower than the world. Lower than we're the lower world. than what is that? Europe. Take in what? Look. In what? Take a look. Right here. Here's case death. Oh, you're doing death as a proportion of cases. I'm talking about death as a proportion of population. That's where the U.S. is really uh, bad. Well, well, Much worse than South Korea, Germany, etc. You can't. You can't do that. You have Why to go. Can't I do that? You have to go by. You have so there's two ways to measure. One way is number of cases, how many of those cases died, right? So that is the statistic that the president is looking at to say we're lower than the world or best, basically. And the interviewer is looking at death per population. So number of people in total that died out of the population of the country. Now that statistic looks much worse. As for example, if you have more widespread in the country of the disease, sickness, a virus, then that percentage of deaths is going to be higher because some percentage of all of the many more infected would be higher. And then that, that statistic keeps going up as more people die in the country. While if you just have, are looking at just the sick people, the number that die from being sick, that percentage, hypothetically, should be con pretty consistent at a certain number, as long as those people can get their health care to uh, survive the virus. You have to go by where, look, here is the United States. You have to go by the cases. The cases Why are not there. as a proportion of population? We have somebody, 
what it says is when you have somebody that yeah. has it where there's a case, oh, okay. the people that live sure. from oh. those cases. It's surely a relevant statistic to say if the US has X population and X percentage of death of that population no, versus you South have Korea. To go by the cases. Well, look at South Korea, yeah. for example, 51 million population, 300 deaths. It's you, like, it's you, crazy. You don't know that. I do. It's you on the, don't know that. Do, you think they're faking their statistics, uh, South Korea? I, I, I won't get into country? that because they have a very good relationship yeah. with the country. But you so this is where you get into it, having to look at to see if you don't trust the data coming from other locations. Now, you may not trust perhaps one location, but if you start to distrust all locations of data, then that becomes very conspiratorial, and it's, it's hard to discredit everybody's numbers because everyone's numbers would have to be wrong in order for our cases or our in order for our numbers to not be nearly as bad as they actually are. And let's move on to another clip about election results, accepting election results. Opinion. You told Fox News recently that you couldn't say whether you'd accept the results of the 2020 election. What does that actually look like as the sitting president? I mean, it's unprecedented. What well, would that actually look Hillary like? Hillary Clinton never accepted well, she, them. She conceded on them. She conceded on them. She conceded on them. She got she that's got important very point. That, That's an important point. She conceded on election night. So she, she conceded when it was shown that she had lost. And that's the key point here is about conceding. Will you basically move on from power if you, in fact, do lose? It's not about asking about someone being upset they lost. It's about would they kind of accept it. It's not about being upset. Now, she grumbled about it and, and said all sorts of... Grumbled? She okay, wrote books fine. about it. She wrote I books. Don't use the word grumbled. Fine, but she wrote books about it. <laughs> That's fine, but and I'm just... she got beaten either. I get it. I get it. 306 I, to 223. I, I'm That's not disputing lot. you beat Hillary Clinton. That's a lot. Listen, what I'm asking is, is you're the, you'll be the sitting president in the White House. What does that look like? I'll, not accepting... I'll tell you what it looks like. Are you litigating? Well, let me tell you what it looks okay. like. Okay. So we have a new phenomena. It's called in, it's called mail-in voting, where you send where- And this is where he diverges into the criticism of mail-in ballots. For new. governor- well, It's been here since the Civil War. In terms of the kind of, the kind of millions and millions of ballots, they've never- It'll be, it'll be like bigger this, this year because of the pandemic. Bigger? Not bigger, massively bigger. Yeah, because of the pandemic. So they're gonna send tens of millions of ballots to California, all over the place. Who, who's gonna get them? I have a friend who lives in Westchester County. They send applications, not ballots. His son passed away. He had a beautiful, wonderful son, young man, passed away seven years ago. He called me, he said, I just got a, I just got a ballot Probably from an my son, Robert. Probably he died different. seven years ago. Somebody got a ballot for a dog. Somebody got a ballot for something else. You got millions of ballots going. Nobody even knows where they're going. You look at some of the corruption having to do with universal mail-in voting. Absentee voting is okay. You have to apply. You have to go through a process. You have to apply Absentee for mail-in. Absentee voting it's the same is thing. good. Look. So when you're applying for your mail-in ballot, you have to make sure your information is up to date so you can get your ballot. And there are some checks and balances in place to make sure that if, for example, somebody dies, they're not going to still get a ballot in the mail. Um, many states involve having to do an application each time and verify the information. And some states are a little more lenient just to automatically send out the ballots when they're a more mail-in voting state. But in general, you have to be verifying signatures during the application process or when you submit the ballot. And during the application process, you are verifying driver's license and address and things like that. Now, when you are actually sending in these ballots, there have been some cases of ballots being rejected, but a lot of times when they're rejected, that's because somebody filled out, for example, two choices for one of the items when you're only allowed to select one, or they never signed it, or it arrived late, or it was not sealed correctly or postmarked or something about the mail. So obviously, if you don't sign your ballot, that ballot is going to be thrown out. But if you look at numbers election-wide, we've always been doing mail-in ballots and absentee ballots. And Statistically, while there have been problems, more often it's a ballot is thrown out because there's like no signature. 
but as far as actual election fraud, you can look at the numbers and it is extremely low in cases where there's been actual fraud going on. It's usually just an incomplete ballot, which has to be ruled out and not counted, or a late ballot, which would arrive after which it can no longer be counted. Let's look at uh, one more clip from the Axios interview about the helping out of the black community. I did more for the black community than anybody with the possible exception of Abraham Lincoln. Whether you like it or not, people say, oh, that's you really you, you believe you did more than Lyndon Johnson who passed the Civil I Rights think Act? I did, yeah. How? Because I How got criminal did justice you do? reform done. I got prison reform. Lyndon Johnson. I've done things. I've got, well. He passed the yes, Civil Rights yes. Act. How has it worked out if you take a look at what Lyndon Johnson did? You think the Civil Rights Act? So that's an interesting way to tackle it. Talking about Lyndon Johnson's Civil Rights Act, suggesting that how has it worked out? So it sounds like the interviewer is about to say he might be suggesting that it was a bad idea. So I think in this case it actually was a slip up by Trump of the way he's phrasing the question, phrasing his answer. What he means is it's taken so long to get past some of the racism in some cases where it still kind of exists, but you're trying to improve slowly over time, ideally more quickly, but it turns out it usually happens slowly. So I don't think he's actually criticizing the uh, Civil Rights Act, although it would be, have been interesting if he actually made that clear and said, no, I, I'm not saying it was a bad idea, which he actually doesn't ever mention that. He doesn't confirm that it wasn't a bad idea. So I could be wrong in that analysis, actually. How that has it worked state? out? Because frankly, it, it took a long time but for African Americans, but you under think that my was administration, Jonathan, mm -hmm. under my administration, African Americans were doing better than they had ever done in the history of this country. So that's the side he's tackling it from. But it would have been a good idea probably to say, no, I do not think that it was a mistake, just to clarify that point, because he kind of just brushes past that, and you might wonder, well, did he mean it's a mistake? That's not, the, not, not a great look. So I did a lot, job numbers, all of the money, they had money, they were getting great, their, their percentage was, was up, their housing ownership was up. They did better than they've ever done I just until don't know we how got hit. And now you know what we're doing? I'm building it up again. We're gonna have it, next year will be a great year, unless it's screwed up by somebody that doesn't know what he's doing, which could happen, but I don't think it will. John Lewis is lying in state in the US Capitol. How do you think history will remember John Lewis? I don't know, I really don't know. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know John Lewis. Uh, he chose not to come to my uh, uh, inauguration. Uh, he chose. So that was a little bit of a slip up there, I believe, because to dismiss someone entirely because they did not attend your inauguration is somewhat uh, petty, as you might expect. Um, at the same time, dismissing him for not attending an inauguration and then looking at other people he does praise. Who may stand for things that are not so favorable, but then he goes out of his way to compliment them or wish them well, such as when he was wishing Ghislaine Maxwell, accused sex trafficker Jeffrey Epstein. But um, yeah, like probably you don't want to admit that you don't like someone because they didn't attend an inauguration and then rule out their entire life or their entire work. Seems like that could be not taken very well or interpret it as you're kind of uh, shallow in how you view people and that you would dismiss them for that reason. And this has been clips from a few clips from the Axios interview on HBO, President Trump, and thanks for watching.